Ladies, we are back for Permission Talk Episode 7, and we are super excited. Thank you all for joining us, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. All your comments, all of your feedback has meant everything to us. It's helping us to understand what content you love, what we can give you more of. I'm praying that you subscribe, be a part of this journey with us for real, and really go join the Permission World because the conversation doesn't stop there. All that to say, we're jumping into the journey to Permission where we're going to be talking about that the whole Permission life is really a process that mm-hmm. you never end up graduating from. But we want to kind of take you deep in that you'll be able to understand what it looked like for us before we knew who we were and us understanding that we were precisely who God wanted us to be from the very beginning. So mm-hmm. we're just going to talk about the whole process and the journey. Y'all yeah. ready? Let's kick it off with <laughs> what was a decision you might have made as okay. a young woman, as an adolescent, ooh, or a child hmm. that kind of like reflected the life before you knew who you really were? Like, for me, I remember I was dating this guy in high school, and he lived, like, in these apartments, like, close to the school, but not close at all if you were walking. Okay. And I remember I thought in my mind, like, I wanted to spend time with him, so I was like, I'm going to purposely miss the bus. Okay. So Mm. that, because I had a friend that stayed in the same complex as him, and so I was like, I'm going to purposely miss the bus so that I have to walk to his house. And my mama was just, she blew up on me because that was, she was just like, why did you do that? And I was Mm. like... Like, I don't know. <laughs> so what was something that you did or something you experienced? I mean, mine doesn't sound, sound the same. The thing that I used to relate most to when I wasn't living out of the true essence of who I was created to be, I was super annoying. Like, I was needy mm. when I was very young. And my mom used to say this saying all the time, like, Jackie, you live out of your heart. But, like, when I wasn't, it, I was very, like, all up on people wanting attention or trying to jump in people's laps. And she would, like, not be here for it at all. Mm. So that was really, like, I think one of the telltale signs, like, I needed so much external affirmation mm-hmm. and love. Like, I was super super annoying um <laughs> yeah like norman used to get it really bad as my mm. older brother because i would always be like a pest like always like see me like i want mm. your attention and kind of things and so yeah that's kind of my thing mm. mm-hmm. i jumped out of a moving car oh my <laughs> god <laughs> please tell us a you gotta give that story I you can't leave them okay, i jumped out of a moving car in college chasing after a guy mm. I was not driving the car. No, I was. <laughs> she was driving the car. <laughs> and it was after he had embarrassed me and involved another young lady. Man. And I just, I just, I was not it ready to walk away just yet. Mm. So as we were leaving a particular place, I looked over at her and I was like, would it be wrong? I was trying to say, would it be wrong <laughs> if I chase after him? Mm. But instead of finishing my sentence, I just jumped out the car. <laughs> And I call her mom on her after that. That was yes. the that was the point where I was like, we've gone too far. Now, but now <laughs> mom is gonna lost be, mom, she's lost herself, and we're gonna have to wrap this thing back up. So <laughs> yeah, don't jump out of don't a jump car. out of we car. were it was not like on the highway. Mm. You know, we were still in a neighborhood mm. going over a speed bump, and I just opened the door and just you know. I mean, I've wrecked my car, flipped it a couple yeah. times for so, being a nut. You know, but yeah, she, definitely before I had permission. I did yes. not know yes. the permission. We that We don't I say had. people's real name. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Amen. <laughs> she gonna put the people out here. Oh Amen. <laughs> Amen. Lance, if you read the book. Yes, if you read the book, it's Lance. Yes. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, Let's what does having it. permission mean to you, Miss mm. Permission herself? Yes. Come on, break what it down. What does having permission mean to me? I think it is accepting this one truth that you've been precisely created exactly the way God wants you to be. That is in career, that is in identity, that is in how you look, how you dress, in every facet of who you are. God could have made you anyway, mm-hmm. and if He wanted you to be different in any way, He would have made you that way. And so, accepting the truth that He had precision and intentionality with the way He made you, with you, how la- mm-hmm. loud you laugh, or the fact that you don't mm-hmm. laugh at all or if you love people or you kind of to yourself I think all of these intricate parts and uniquenesses about ourselves needs to be owned and harnessed to be used for the gifting for you being here on earth and so yeah I think it's all about precision and understanding and intentionality about the way in which you've been made mm-hmm. your ability to own the right to be exactly that precise version is owning permission mm-hmm. hey, Amen. Mm-hmm. can you take us back to the moment where you were like I, I really need to apply this to my life. Like, I know, again, we talked about, like, jumping out of cars, doing stupid stuff. But I feel like since coming to know the Lord, right? So this mm-hmm. wasn't just like a, oh, I'm finding Jesus. Like, you knew the Lord had been, like, 
close to ministry, all of that. But there was still this moment where you kind of had this epiphany of mm-hmm. like, I'm giving something away that is yeah. not rightfully others to take. So what bring us into that moment of like who Jackie was mm-hmm. before, like right there, like what were some of the fears or some of the thoughts or anything that you everything in my life prior to me answering the call to like walk in my permission was about everyone else. Mm. Everything. It was the way I dress, uh, what job I would go after, um, what I drove. It was all about, um, is this good enough to everybody else? Like, would they think mm. I'm cool if my top is dropped? Would they, oh, would they going to think this weave is late if I, mm. you know, get my hair like this? Like, I can't do not, anything natural because that's too basic. Like, mm. everything had to be up to the standard of whatever I had conjured up in my mind if I'm an ambassador and my daddy will love me. If I, uh, if I have sex before marriage, then this guy will stay with me. It was mm. all about pleasing everyone else. And so though the voices of everybody else were so loud that I had drowned the, even the ability to know who I was and what I liked. I didn't even have an awareness mm. of my actual self because I, my actual identity came, became pleasing everyone. Mm. It was, that was my only goal. It was my only aim. Like Jackie, you're going to show up and do the thing because they're going to know you did it. Like they're going to know you're good. They're going to think you're okay it was all about external affirmation for me Mm -hmm. and it came from a root of rejection and the root of like well I obviously wasn't perfect enough the way I was so let me add all this stuff and then it'll make me better it'll make people stay it'll make people love me it'll make people see me Mm -hmm. um because when my father left I felt unseen and I felt like I didn't have enough or I wasn't worthy enough so I'm gonna Mm -hmm. add this stuff to me and it'll make me worthy and make me valuable to other people so I had Mm -hmm. a long fight with taking a whole bunch of stuff off because of all that I put it on for other people Janaya, can you can you let us know, right? Because you, I've known you for a long time, long right? Time. So I feel like I've had, I've been privy to pick up pieces of permission even okay. before it was like full blown. Mm-hmm. But coming into this, like you kind of, you were like, I'm still not nah. Mm-hmm. When I first came mm-hmm. in, like what was that kind of tension point or mm-hmm. anything when you got introduced to a new world of permission mm-hmm. and just kind of your decision to take hold of that young woman? Mm-hmm. I think the first word that I think of when I think of permission is like release. It's mm. like freedom to be different. Cause I had grown up where I was always like similar to you, like the voices of what other people thought about me. It became who I was. Like I never knew what my favorite color was. Right. I didn't know what my favorite <laughs> food was. I didn't, I didn't, I essentially had no idea who I was, but the, the identity that I have had taken on as accepting other people's voices. Like I like that. Like it had mm. got to a point where it was like, I don't even know if I necessarily want what? to experience this, mm-hmm. you know, new freedom or whatever. But the more, that I came into like this life of permission and freedom it gave me permission (laughs) to change Mm -hmm. like to literally be somebody else like I was like I've been this person for I think I was like around 22 23 Mm -hmm. when I started to like change my life like it gave me the freedom to say like I can become a different person Mm -hmm. like the people Mm -hmm. that knew me back in the day the people that have known this you know like I have the freedom to change my identity to fully accept who I am in the Lord and whatever that looks like whatever (laughs) new character Mm -hmm. traits whatever a new high Hobbies, whatever that looks like, like I'm willing to accept this new identity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thank you for that mm. because it has been such a like to walk around not caring what people think about mm. me or not caring what kind of opinion others have. Like it is the most like debilitating thing. And I think I walked in it for so long. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize how bound I was. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't realize that all of these things that I had just taken, I'm like, that's not you. Mm-hmm. That's not who you really are. Right. And so I'm just really grateful that I get to walk in a different light now. Mm-hmm. And I think listening to you speak about it, it makes me recognize that we talk a lot in the whole permission banner about like, it's about you and your relationship with the father. It's about mm-hmm. what the father says about you. But this really highlights how, how imperative it is to be in the right community and yeah. atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Like you think about the ecosystem in which an animal thrives. There is a specific habitat mm-hmm. that an animal is made to be its mm-hmm. best version. A lion in the wild and you know, with yeah. just open grassland, they're not able to function and fully be who they're made to be mm-hmm. just caged in. And I think when God places you to, around the right people, you're able to like, like I remember for me when I was getting ready to leave Sandersville, it was right at the cusp of leaving out of high school school entering college I started to get um 
I started to interact with people that like they didn't give up their virginity. They mm -hmm. actually they actually held up their morals mm -hmm. and their values. Like it was That's more good. than just about pleasing people. And I was just like, that sounds like it was something about the new language and the mm -hmm. new environment that I was interacting with that I was like, whoa, so people actually don't do things that they don't yes. feel like that they should. Yes. I didn't even know it was a thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that to say many people feel like there's no way I can do that. I believe that if you get around the right people that are actually living mm -hmm. the way you feel mm -hmm. as if you were made to live, you'll feel more free. Mm -hmm. So in, in our worship at Forward City, lots of people get up and they worship and many people experience that freedom yep. for the first time mm -hmm. because they get around people that says, no, this is okay too. Mm -hmm. Not just being in small, limited minded um, worlds or atmospheres that just say like, no, you just settle or you just give up your body or you just mm -hmm. do this thing. I believe um, introducing yourself to other environments that say like, no, you can be a, a avid reader or you can actually mm -hmm. explore yeah. these other sides of you. So you can love singleness and you mm -hmm. seeing people do singleness well it attributes to you living totally different and owning the right mm -hmm. to actually live out what's true to your heart. Mm -hmm. So community does help a lot For sure. with mm -hmm. walking out permission. Mm -hmm. Transforming your thinking. Like it I think does. it's that part that it talks about in Romans 12 about that's how God makes us a new creature by transforming the way we think. think. And that's what permission did for me. Mm -hmm. It literally gave me a new thought pattern and how I walked out my day-to-day -day decisions. Like it's, it all became brand new but mm -hmm. what would you say to someone who is not yet at that place like how would you encourage somebody who is Jackie before she had permission I will tell her um there's a there's another way to life um mm -hmm. that is so free it's mm -hmm. so uh peaceful mm -hmm. and you're missing so much without living yes. uh unboxed like without like there's so when you are prior to permission you are so calculated you hesitate so much there's so much doubt and you don't even find the fullness and the exhilaration that comes from exploring the full essence of who you are mm -hmm. until you actually let go and let down like okay I might disappoint some people or some people might think this is corny but if it's the true essence of who you are there's another level of freedom that is accompanied by you like just being like, bump it, man. Like, I'm going to mm. actually be true to who I am, true to who I am, that you don't find outside of letting go and living and permission. I would just tell you, like, it's a, it's a much better way, a much freer way, a much more fruitful way of living than you've lived already. And I would dare you even challenge you to go after it. You won't ever find it. Like, it's not something somebody can hang mm -hmm. you. You mm -hmm. have to, because it's so tailor-made to each mm -hmm. individual woman. Like, what I experience is totally different than what pa what Keisha, I always be like, Pastor Keisha, I don't right. know, because I say it all the time, it's hurt. Oh, uh, we it's, kicking it. Right, it's so much <laughs> different than what Keisha experienced mm -hmm. as you let go. Like, Spark came out of, mm -hmm. which is her candle business of her light saying God what else is left like yep. what else mm -hmm. is in me and no different than this podcast came like mm -hmm. it's so many more yep. beautiful things inside of you when you actually let go and release God to bring the fullness of who you've been created to be out mm -hmm. what would you add I attest to that because mentioning spark I remember for so long I used to be like I'm not creative like mm -hmm. I'm analytical because I am orderly and mm -hmm. this is you know it's a part of my personality and I married somebody who's so creative he's so <laughs> this and I'm like well that's him that's his thing whoa but then God was challenging me to be like no like you have permission to live out this part like because it's always been in your heart you see things and you see music videos mm -hmm. and all this other mm -hmm. stuff like you don't have to be afraid or be boxed in by what people will think or they yep. only know you as as this person that's good. and you don't have to give up this other side like you don't have to like oh now you got to just become this you know <laughs> mm -hmm. and not this other part you can be both and mm -hmm. you can be both and, mm -hmm. and and being okay with it looking different mm -hmm. you know because some people will say that if you're analytical you can't be creative yep. but he breaks the mold when he makes Akisha Young and says, yep. says who yeah like, that's what's so good about God mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I can do what I want and pour all these different ingredients mm -hmm. into this one in incredible young lady and and hit the earth in a way that's never been hit before and I want people to have permission yep. for that mm -hmm. like oh just because I'm a singer does that mean that I can't be a writer too yep. like mm -hmm. oh just because you know I work in this uh, corporate America can I not also serve well in ministry mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. do all of it mm -hmm. because God made you that way and if you're feeling both pools go after both mm -hmm. don't just li live yourself limited to one part of who you've been because mm -hmm. some of the times it's not even just other people's voices it's Yours, our it's own ours. voice mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. and I love that part about permission is because it helps you to unlock 
unlock the fullness of who you yeah, are. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Like even when we're in permission room, you know, we're like, you may pray one day this way, you may worship, you may read, you know, like it's not just you have to box yourself into then that's all that you are, but it gives you full permission to be a full version oh, of mm-hmm. who you feel like the mm-hmm. Lord, you know, like well, he's calling you to be and not just part of you Mm -hmm. and I think that's the thing like part of you was okay with being a supportive wife right but there was other part that was like she is a women in power and that Mm -hmm. is what permission is about like Mm -hmm. okay let's unlock the fullness of of who you are Mm -hmm. and I will even say not just unlock the fullness of who you are but how you are to do it because Mm -hmm. My women empowering is different than your women empowering, mm-hmm. which is different than your empowerment, but they're all women empowering, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. And so just because you've never seen it show up on social media the way you do it doesn't mean that it's not right to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's a part of you owning like, I'm uniquely like this. Mm-hmm. And it's beautiful too. Precision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, how can women do a better job? How can we do a better job with helping others go out and do the same, right? Mm-hmm. So that it's not just on you to be like, you a bad girl, there's more in you, but how can we... We kind of take hold of that mm. in our everyday lives with the people around us to help our sisters mm-hmm. to go after mm-hmm. it. I really believe it's something that we do very well with each other. Like in one of our previous podcasts, you were talking about this genuine nature that you have mm. and and hearing mm-hmm. that and okay. highlighting it. Like mm-hmm. sometimes we get used to like, oh girl, you whack in this area and only talking about the negative. But one Mm -hmm. thing I think that is very positive about the atmosphere we live in, if we see something that you're doing that is valuable, we're one, like you're not going to hear first Mm -hmm. from somebody outward. You're going to hear it from tables like this and people Mm -hmm. that you do life with. I'm Mm -hmm. like, girl, you've been killing it. Like Mm -hmm. you're doing great. And, and we're going to always push you to give more. I think Mm -hmm. that that's Mm -hmm. part of the reason why we're always going after something new. Like Mm -hmm. you're going to be affirmed a lot Mm -hmm. at these tables. We're not ones that, you know, Mm -hmm. speak negative negative to each other or talk bad about each other. We're really careful about the words we speak over each other. And so I think that it pushes us to go after it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think being like Jesus, like I think (laughs) it's being like Jesus. Like I remember when like my first step to permission was actually through uh, like Brianna and Bashar. I love y'all if you're watching. (laughs) Um, But I remember when I first met them, I still cursed. Like Mm. I still cursed and they didn't, but they did not condemn me okay or they did they just showed me a different way That's and it, so was, it was so mm-hmm. like and i remember like i asked i was like so y'all don't like y'all don't cuss and it was just like no i just use different language and it mm-hmm. that was it it was just like a new it was just like hmm, wow like mm-hmm. okay like that and it it that mm-hmm. alone more than them like trying to force me whether mm-hmm. them trying to condemn me or Taking whatever you to the bible they that, were a bible they mm-hmm. lived it <laughs> that they actually lived mm-hmm. like what they talked about and that was more inspiring than anything so it was that that pulled me to stop and change my life mm-hmm. more than they could have like you know pointed at me and, da, da, da. and i think that's what real community mm-hmm. is. i love that yeah mm-hmm. and i would challenge people to like pray for their sisters and the people around them because mm-hmm. i think one thing that you guys did really well for me is y'all saw something in me that I didn't really see yet mm. and helped to position and place me in positions that I would like be able to unlock those gifts. So good. And so being able to like discern and see like if you can give your sister just like a like no go ahead why don't you lead the prayer that day you know <laughs> or do something but be mindful and be um prayerful about that person so that the, the god can speak and he may open your eyes to see things in her that she may you know be hiding or have weaknesses in and you mm-hmm. can kind of join along with the lord and helping to mm-hmm. affirm that part yep. in them you know confirm it and all of that stuff but i think that was something that was pivotal for me when it was like i was not <laughs> the nicest you know I was more like straight you know mm-hmm. direct but you guys saw something and was like no we're gonna help you know you can be over this to area this. yeah and nurture it mm-hmm. and bring something I was like girl that's not just you that's your defaults mm-hmm. but that's not you mm-hmm. and so we see who you are you love people like mm-hmm. you really do yep. like you're yep. not cold or you're not just so busy and so that helped to be like you know what I am I'm not that person mm-hmm. like you know I do care about people and it helped to unlock something in me too. I love that you brought that up because it brings to the table another thing that I I think helps people actually end up getting to the truth of who they are and it's truth. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes people don't have friend groups that tell them 
the truth. Mm-hmm. Along with good affirmation, we are we are a group of sisters that tell each other the truth. Mm-hmm. If we see somebody or see one of us acting in a way or even thinking mm-hmm. or you know living out of pers- a perspective that is not in alignment with our truth, you're like, hey, like, so you don't believe you God can give you grace for that, or you don't mm-hmm. believe that? Like, we are very much so ones that will challenge each Absolutely. other up. Along with affirmation, we are actually women of truth mm-hmm. as well, mm-hmm. and and willing to receive truth. You can't just be a disher of truth. Yes, you have ma'am. to be humble enough and open enough to receive. I'll tell you and tell anybody, I'm one of the biggest students. Like after I preach a message, I want to know how could I have been better? What could have been different? Like I'm not ever so much up here that I'm never going to not be a student as well. And I think it takes you far fast when you're one that's open to yep. cor- constructive criticism, knowing that the people that you have around you have your back is mm-hmm. good. My husband has been really good for me in the way that we were talking about in that. Like this was something weird that happened recently. I had a um, friend tell his wife, um, like, make sure you put on some makeup before we go out. And Travis and I were with the couple. Mm -hmm. And I asked him on our ride back, I said, you've never, ever, like, asked me to add to myself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really understand it. Like, is it like that? Like, I was like, I mean, I know every day I'm not just Beyonce (laughs) to you. You know, like, what is it about you or why are you like that? Like, in the, we've been together, like, what, 14 years, if we Mm -hmm. not include not the time we were married. Like, why don't you ever, like, he's always like, do less. Like, it's Mm -hmm. like, girl, put on your tennis shoes. Like, if you don't feel like it, like, Mm -hmm. it's, he's just like, I believe in the natural essence of who you've been created to be. Mm -hmm. And it's like this constant, with out saying it like affirmation again like just as you are just mm-hmm. as you are it's like and you want that everywhere you want it in the kind of person you marry and the people you surround yep. yourself with you mm-hmm. don't ever want somebody to be contradicting the thing that God says in, in terms of being in your close internet circle so mm-hmm. I just wanted to put that forward too mm-hmm. like you want it to be everywhere being affirmed like mm-hmm. absolutely you have enough as you are mm-hmm. What are some things that keep us from this life of permission? Like some hindrances, like what stops us from going after who we really are? Um, the comfortability of who we've been. Ooh. I would say one. I remember my mama used to tell me, she was like, Jackie, because I was so tired. Like, like, y'all, I used to drive like, I was in Statesboro and my hairdresser was in, like in Atlanta. So I used to drive like four hours to get my weave laid because like <laughs> it was the only way I knew to exist in the world. And she was like, Jackie, you could just take it out and you could wear your natural hair. I was like, I can't wear my natural hair. Like, that's not me. And like, to your point, it becomes so much a part of your identity that mm-hmm. like, I used to literally mm-hmm. feel caged and like, uh, bound by like I can't just take my weave out wash my hair and do something like mm-hmm. that was so much bondage but when people saw me on social media I was slayed and lifted mm-hmm. and all of the things you know <laughs> yes. like it was all things perfect but they didn't see the tears that I cried when I wanted to like just take my hair out and wash my hair like the bondage that's associated with that can be so detrimental so to speak and so mm-hmm. I'm just saying like the ability to like take it off and go a different direction um to be able to push beyond can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Like the comfortability of just knowing the girl who have her hair laid will hinder you from actually finding a girl that's got natural cut off hair Mm -hmm. on the side. Like it's like you have to be willing to let go of what was Mm -hmm. and experiment because it didn't start here. Mm -hmm. It started as something totally different, Mm -hmm. but your ability to even experiment to find your Mm -hmm. new special place can be the one thing that can hinder you from living a life of permission because you're too afraid to find or experiment to find what what Mm -hmm. could work next Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or fear because that place, this is so unfamiliar. It is. Like who, if we've lived a certain way so long, we can look at the girl that God has created to be and be like, I just don't know what that's like. Yeah. Like I don't know. I don't know if people are like that. I don't know if people are like that. I don't know. If my friends have to change. Like what all like so I think I think another one of those hindrances is fear. Mm-hmm. Like just letting go of like, man, no matter how this I know that this is who God called me mm-hmm. to be. So no matter how this turned out, I know he got me. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. all I need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want I'm sorry. No, you got it. I want to encourage the ladies too because because even hearing about, like, thinking about your story, like, I remember when you did, like, a little Bob yep. situation, but you were so proud of that Bob, because mm. it was such a big step. It was you a know, step. It was such a big step in not, <laughs> like, seeing, like, you now, like, oh, she's so bold, she got this, or, you know, and mm-hmm. feel intimidated that, you know, like, like... I can't take all the weave out today. Because yes. mm. even with my Bob, I think she had a little piece in the front, yeah, yeah. but it was less pieces, and I was so <laughs> proud of my less yes. pieces. Like, it, like, take steps and understand that it yep. is a process. Yes. I love that you brought that. Yep. Like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And one other thing we want to highlight too, because I know a lot 
of people are like, well, I felt like I had permission in one season, but I kind of let it go. Like, okay. Speak to them about how to sustain it and not beat yourself up if you do find yourself back into a place mm-hmm. that is like, man, I, I know I'm not that girl anymore, mm-hmm. but yet I, I got stuck in it. I again. got stuck in there. Like, how do we keep our feet going um, mm-hmm. and sustain that? I like, think start over. Like, you're giving mm-hmm. yourself the grace to say, like, okay, I missed it. I, I got back into something that is wasn't true to who I am, but being honest and vulnerable with the Lord and saying, God, I know this isn't what you called me to, and I'm deciding, even if it's just today, to say, even if I was supposed to let it go three weeks ago, today is still a brand new day mm-hmm. with brand new mercies. And he's so willing to come alongside you right here as you start again. Mm-hmm. Maybe you have been celibate for a year and then, you know, you didn't had a day. You had a mm-hmm. night. But you don't have to let that night be three years. Mm-hmm. You don't have to let that night be three years or, or frame the next season of your life. You can today say, I'm not going back to that. And I know that that relationship block and delete is another beautiful ministry. Yes. Like you can decide today to go forward asking the father to meet you right where you are he will and you don't have to start over in the way that you think like you're like oh I gotta you know get myself all the back together mm-hmm. I can remember so many mentees that I've had to tell them like God is not like gonna push you back at level eight no you can start back at C brand new mm-hmm. even though you might have went back and kind of dabbled he'll start right back where you are and push you mm-hmm. forward and so yeah mm-hmm. I say be honest be vulnerable but at least understand that today is a new day that you can start Absolutely. I love that mm-hmm. what is some homework like a good mm-hmm. first step that someone yes. can take to gain in their permission. Mm. I think um, sitting down in vulnerability to mm. say who you are right now. Like when you think of yourself, who do you see yourself as? And it might be all these labels like I'm pastor so-and-so and I'm evangelist this and I'm a mummy to them. And after you write it all down, also pause and say, okay, now I, I can write down all the things that I feel like make me valuable, but pausing to say, God, what do you see when you see me? Mm -hmm. And you'll hear things like, I just love you. Or you'll hear things like you are, um, you are naturally a woman of prayer. Like you can, Mm -hmm. you'll find something so much more stripped back and you can start to see the comparison of things that you might've added to yourself Mm -hmm. that you feel like add valuable, add value to you. And you can just one by one, slowly start Mm -hmm. redefining how you view yourself. I think, um, sitting in the light of God's truth can help you combat some of the things that you might've added to yourself that you feel feel like make you who you are um that could at one moment be taken from you and without it you feel like you're nothing and so it's vital in this moment where you have the opportunity to just give it over not it be taken from you Mm -hmm. to redefine the true essence of who you think you are Mm -hmm. that's good really Mm -hmm. good yeah All right. Well, this was permission or the journey to permission and you being able to kind of navigate and understand it's not always just this automatic. Mm -hmm. You just arrive on stages or arrive at doing conferences. It's slow, but natural, Mm -hmm. um, small guesses that you give. I tell people all the time, it's not just this one big yes. It's small yeses after other small yeses that lead to real big transformation. And that's what you want to see as you journey to this life of permission. You have the right to live in the full of who God created you to be from the very beginning. It was done with precision and intentionality. Mm -hmm. And I pray that you receive that about yourself today. I love you and I pray that this podcast blessed you. Hey ladies, listen, we pray that you have enjoyed our Journey to Permission podcast. And PJ gave us some homework. So what we want you to do is go ahead, take some time, do the homework, and then come back and comment below once you complete it because we want to check in with our sisters to see how's it going, how's it going, how (laughs) it is going, and to make sure we are walking this thing out taking this journey together Mm -hmm. and do not forget to like share comment subscribe all of the good things to stay connected with what's happening here share this with a friend somebody Mm -hmm. else needed to see yes so make sure you share with a friend and don't forget to join us in permission world which is dr jackie's online community we're definitely going to be continuing this conversation we got a lot of stuff planned for there so make sure you join us in permission world we love y'all and can't wait to see y'all again